It is Wednesday, December 2nd, 2020 at 6 p.m. I'm calling the Lakeville Board of Health meeting to order. Is there anyone recording this other than Lake Cam? I hear no one. In accordance with governor's order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law related to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, the December 2nd, 2020 meeting at 6 p.m. of the Board of Health shall be physically closed to the public health to avoid group congregation. However, to view this meeting in progress, please go to www.facebook.com slash LakeCam. You do not need a Facebook account to view this meeting. This meeting will be recorded and available to be viewed at a later date at LakeCam.tv slash. This is uh, the chairman, Derek Maxim of the Board of Health. Let me permit to conform Confirm that all members, staff, and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Bob Pellucci. Present. Chris Spratt. Present. Edward Cullen, the health agent. Present. Okay, we have uh, two things on the meeting. One from SFG Associates. Can you hear me, Brad, I believe? That's correct. Okay, Brad Fitzgerald from SFG. And we're also meeting with uh, Grady Consulting LLC to discuss an upgrade. Um, yeah, he's just coming on now. Okay. And do we know who it is? Uh, the name? I, I didn't recognize. I think it's Kevin Grady. Oh, okay. Just joined. Okay. Yes. Write that down. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else calling in presently or anybody on that I'm not aware of? I hear no one. Okay. First on the agenda, 16 4th Avenue, meet with SFG Associates to discuss requested variances for an existing well, which was not permitted. Um, I'll turn it over to Brad Fitzgerald of SFG. Good evening. Uh, it's Brad Fitzgerald from SFG Associates, 28 Main Street in Lakeville, project engineers. Uh, <clears throat> the current owners of the property have asked us to provide you a plan showing the existing well with adjacent septic systems and wells and water services. Uh, so we've done that. Um, as you can see, there, there are um, a couple of septic systems, well, one cesspool, one septic system within 100 feet of the existing well. The well was installed prior to this family buying the house from what they've told me. Um, so as Part of this filing in, in order to, I, I guess, clean this up, we would need um, the variances to Title V uh, to allow the existing well to be 89 feet from the soil absorption system of Career at 14th at 14 Fourth Avenue, which is the one just to the north, um, and to allow it to be 90 feet from the existing cesspool in McLaughlin at 17, which is across the street and one lot south. Um, every other leaching area is more than 100 feet from this well. Um, then we would also ask for variances to the Lakeville Board of Health regulations to allow that existing well to be nine feet from the road, five feet from the sideline, um, instead of the required 10 on the sideline, 20 on the road, and um, to, to allow the well to be 89 feet from that soil absorption system at 14 and the 90 feet from the cesspool across the street. Uh, this, you know, and this really was the only place that this well could have gone at the time um, to get maximum separation from any of these abutting cesspools or wells. Okay, thank you, Brad. Um, I do have questions on this, but um, Ed, I'd like to have Ed come on and just uh, update a couple things. Um, he was looking up on this one, um, just on the well. I believe this had come to a meeting for that well and it was denied previously, um, but somehow it was put in. Um, I just wanted to know more info on that, why it was denied. Um, and then if we know who put the well in illegally, um, I, I think that should be looked into, um, especially if they are a licensed well driller in town. Um, do you know if it is a point or is it uh, a deep well, Brad? Actually, I don't. I don't know that. 
um, it was a um, it was a cover on it, and um, we we just didn't. I guess we weren't able to tell from when we were out in the field. Okay, is it a uh, six inch uh, steel casing sticking? I don't the know that. Okay, all right, uh, Ed, are you there? Can you bring us up to speed on anything you you found out on this one? Yeah, it's, it's basically what you said. Um, so back in 2002, this is, I'm showing the plan now, um, they um, went for a new septic system and a, a, a proposed well here in the, the corner where the existing well is now. Um, they were approved for the septic system, um, but they were denied for the well. Um, on the, the, the comments just simply say, you know, the the well was denied without prejudice because of the current um, situation, current water situation in Clark Shores. Um, that was the only reason given. Um, I did, um, so here it says septic only, well denied. Um, and this was the actual approved plan. Um, the one thing to note on this plan is um, if you look on um, 17 4th Ave, um, the cesspool is in the front. And they're actually showing it 77 feet off. This is incorrect. Brad's plan is the correct plan showing the cesspool in the back. Now, I can't say for sure whether that was the reason they, they failed it. Um, I really don't know. But um, the situation is somewhat improved compared to when they, it was denied back in 2002. And since they didn't give su sufficient reasons, um, I can't say otherwise what their reason for failing it was. Um, but as they said, um, the previous owner then put in a well uh, in 2002. Um, that well was um, discovered in 2007 um, and the Board of Health asked them to abandon it, which they did. Um, um, and now the new owner um, would like to reuse the well since they don't have water in the wintertime. They, they are hooked into the Clark Shores water now. Um, and I believe they plan to once it becomes permanent as well. Okay, thank you for that update. And obviously we don't know who installed this well. I mean, obviously there's no- Yeah, there's no, no records or nothing there. Um, it just, other than it just says it was illegally um, installed without a permit. Okay. Um, all right, I guess um, that pretty much answers most of my questions for you, Brad. Um, it's kind of a- Derek, I just, I, I'm trying to remember if I'm, I'm hoping I'm not confusing it, um, but am I not, mis am I mistaken? Is it the, the new water not down 4th Avenue yet? Um, I can confirm with Ed, but I believe they, it is down 4th Avenue, but they didn't put new pipes. They just changed the valving out at the end of one roads and tied the new main into the old main that wasn't deep enough. Um, so I believe they're still shutting it off, but I, I'm not hundred percent sure on that one. Ed, do you know hundred um, percent? Yes, they do. They, they are the new using the new wells, which are a better source than the old wells. So that's an improvement, but those lines, as Derek said, they're not deep enough um, to go uh, winter the entire winter. I don't know when they are shutting it off, uh, or if they have already shut it off, but in the past they've always shut it off during the winter time because, like I said, they're they're about 18 inches down, and a lot of the a lot of the houses don't have any insulation where they're coming up, and it's just um, a crawl space there, uninsulated. So they if they don't shut it off, there'll probably be some freezing. Okay, does that answer your question, Brad? Uh, yeah, I was just I I was just trying to. I recall something about the, the water. Um, I just couldn't remember what it was. Um, so they, my, my clients also asked me to point out that back in 2014, the board did grant similar type of variance for a well on Seven Oak Street, um, where they there were two septic systems. One was 71, one was 92 from the, the well. Um, and that all that also is an existing installed well. I don't know if it was illegally installed or not, though. Okay, and there was—I don't recall that one off the top of my head. Um, I, I think I was on the board at that time. 
Um, but I don't know if that was just replacing an existing well that might have failed um, on that one. Do you, you probably don't know off the top of your head? I don't head. know that. It here, so I, Ed wouldn't know. Um, I'll turn it over to Bob. Just to put your comments in or questions. Oh, I'm assuming that that was seasonal, and that's why they had to put in an illegal well. I believe it is seasonal, yeah. Every time I've been out there, there's been no one there. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, that's probably why it got denied. I mean, I don't remember all these things off the top of my head, but right, if we allow, if we allow a well to be legal and a septic system to be legal, then we just made it year-round. So that's why it probably got denied back then, but without having all that stuff in front of me, I don't know. So. Okay, Bob. Uh, Chris, uh, questions for Brad or comments? So what, what you think um, about it? So, yeah, I mean, I'm curious if they're renting it out because um, the owners of record, their address is not Lakeville, it's in Newton. Um, so, I mean, I don't know if it's – that might, might be a concern with the lack of water and other similar situations we've had over the winters down – in this part of the town. Um, the other thing is I looked up the, uh, the assessors too. Um, I believe this was foreclosed on the bank. It was bank owned and they, these owners bought it from the bank. I don't know why the bank would allow something like this to go through, um, you know, without having a proper well on it. Um, I think those, those are just kind of some statements I would rather just put out there. I don't have too many questions because everything's been kind of answered. Um, before this plan was brought up, I was actually like, I was looking at, the, at Brad's plan. And I was saying, wow, that's a pretty precise location for it to be as far away from everything. I didn't know about this other plan. So that answered those questions as to how it got installed, where it got installed, you know. Um, yeah, I don't have too many other comments other than, yeah, this is just an unfortunate situation. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, Ed, do you want to put any comments in on this one? Uh, j just one way or the other, or um, just just um, the the main two uh, lots that were of concern here would be um, seventeen Fourth Ave, um, which is down here. Um, this individual could put a septic system back here. Um, he, he has an existing cesspool, which is a failure right now. Um, it's, it's, it's also a vacant building. So he does have the ability to put one in. Um, it's a little trickier for this guy up here. Um, if, um, he doesn't have as much room, but he seems to have an existing system. But the, um, the other lot here, they have plenty of room for systems. They have room here. This, this guy already has room. So it's really just this um, 14 fourth Ave. That's the only one that would, you could really prevent him from doing anything. And like I said, he has one now and um, actually um, the previous plan shows a little better, um, but it's right here, but there's also a well right here as well. So this, this guy has only so much to do there. So I guess he would just have to do a remove and replace um, where it is now, but, but he also has his own well too. So, and, and that's clearly less than a hundred. So. Okay. Thank you, Ed. Um, all right. I, I guess on this one, it, it's a tough call for me. I mean, it's what, what do we do when they were denied and they put one in? I know it's not this owner. I, I know it's not their fault. Um, but, but this well had been clearly denied by a previous board and put in illegally. And now they're here asking to use it. Um, uh, again, every case you don't set a precedent, but I don't want anyone out there thinking that they can just go put in legal well and then come to the board and it's going to get approved. It, it's it's definitely not the way to do it. Um, well, if there's no one living there through the winter, could we just table it to the spring and see when they're going to get tied into the new water? Well, I think that's what these uh, new owners are looking for. They want to use it year round. Um, and they can't use it when this water gets shut off and, and if it's not already shut off. So that's what they're asking. They're asking to use this well through the winter months. 
Um, or they, I don't know if they'll even, once it's tied in, if they could just plan on using it year round and not even using the top, uh, the public water that's down there. Um, again, we could do stipulations if we did agree to something that they must tie in to uh, the fourth uh, association water and abandon this at the time it becomes year round is an option. Um, I know we've done that on, on other systems down there. Uh, I think on this, if it's going forward with doing that, I think it's getting tricky because the, the people that come in for the septic repair and agree to tie in within the year and sit at the meeting and say, yes, they go put the system in and then they sell the house to people that don't know the previous owner agreed to that. And now when the water comes down the road, we have to send the, the new buyer uh, stuff from the board of health saying you must now tie into the association water and abandon that well, which they probably have no idea of. Um, and it, it's, it's not even their fault because they didn't know. So it's something that might have to be a deed on the uh, deed restriction on it recorded at the registry. So if it is sold, they, they're aware that that was one of the stipulations of allowing this to happen. Um, that's just one of my thoughts. Again, they prepay for the tie-in. I don't I believe they did. I believe they did, but I don't know that for sure. Uh, you said they did, Ed. Also, you believe they? Yeah, did? I. When I spoke with the owner, they had said they want to hook in, but you know they they're just. Um, or, I mean, they are using it now, but they they want to the the year-round water, um, but. It's just getting through the winters right now, and they're they figured it's worth a try just because they have a well in their front yard. It's not like they're drilling a new well; it's already there. So they thought it, it's at least worth trying to to ask for it. Eric, well, I just I just look at it that like we all work in towns all over the place, and we try to be more than accommodating with people, but. What would happen anywhere else if the building inspector, the board of health, or somebody specifically voted and said, don't do something, and you did it, right? That nobody would give you permission. I mean, that that's what's annoying me, that they asked and it got told no. It wasn't that they, it was already there. And, you know, and, and the new people, yeah, it's not their fault, but, I mean, they they their recourse is civil action against whoever sold them the house if they, if they, told them that it had a legal well on it. I mean, it, I mean, if we just, if we just tell people no, and then they do it anyway, and then we approve it, I mean, then that makes everything we do worthless. Cause what about all the other people we said no to and, and they, and they're not doing it because they follow the rules. I mean, I mean, you guys can overrule me if you want to do something else, but this was a, this to me is, if there's nothing more black and white than this, that the board voted and said no, and then we let them do it anyway, then I don't even know why we they need us then. Just let people do whatever they want. So they could go after the bank. Um, the owner that installed the well, um, I believe he's deceased. So I don't know there's much there, but um, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of curious, maybe we table it for a little bit. like. The other thing is we haven't even talked about a well test. Do we even know if it's good water or not? Um, but if we had proof that they paid already to tie into the new water where they have a legal state, you know, I'd be maybe more willing to talk if we had proof that they've already paid, that they're going to tie in. They have, they have monetary value in tying into that, that new water line coming in and then seeing a wire test to see that it's, it's potable. You know what I mean? Okay. And on your other comments, um, I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe these people bought this as seasonal with uh, this well not connected because they were told to, to disconnect this well back in 2007, I believe Ed had said the year was, um, right. because they found out it wasn't a legal well. And the Board of Health told them that it was to be, I don't know why it wasn't decommissioned at the time and been filled and capped, um, but that's, that's another question. Um, I, I mean, I, I'll go along, I guess, with your opinion, Chris, if, if they want to, uh, see if it, it, it does pass as a well and, uh, 
see if they do did pay the tie-in already to, to the clock shows they have paid the tie-in um again it's it's a tough one for me to to say yes on honestly i don't i just think it's setting a bad precedent it's, i agree 100 percent with bob it's not the way to do it um but I, I think water is coming down there i mean they're, they're still doing these lines so within a year or two i hope at the most there, there will be new piping in front of this house um Maybe it's something, maybe you could just, just throwing stuff out there. Maybe we could allow just for this winter to use it while this water is shut off and until next year. And then it is to be, go back to seasonal as soon as it's turned on and they have to revisit us next year, maybe as a thought, just throwing that out there. Um, I don't know how you'd feel on that one, Bob. Um, but if we want to continue. I mean, it, you don't have to agree with me. I mean, I just. You know, to me, is if you, you go and you get a no, and then you do it anyway. I mean, you know, I, I there'll be no hard feelings if you to do do something else. But to me, it's just like, what's the point? It, you know what I mean? It's not even like it was already there. The people didn't know better. Or it, it's like they got told no, and then they did it anyway. And it's you know, I don't know. It's, it's this one's just really. I don't know why, but this one's just annoying me that, you know, we, we bend over backwards to help people. And that was probably one of the few times in all these years, we probably said no to somebody and then they just decided to go ahead and do it anyway. So, I mean, you know, like I said, no hard feelings if you guys want to do something different, but I just don't agree with it. No, and I, I agree with you for the most part, Bob, but like these newer owners, like they bought it thinking it was, they were led to believe it was good. And they were told that I just stop using it. If they could show us that they they're already willing, that, you know, mon they've already paid the money, I'd be a little bit more flexible. But if if they aren't, I then my flexibility kind of goes away. So I'm okay. kind of Chris. Can I just doubt because they kind of fell into this, you know, by mistake. I mean, otherwise, normally I'd be right along with you. If it was somebody that they said no and did it anyway, then yeah, definitely no. But Chris, can I just maybe clarify something? Unless I'm confused, um, I don't. I think you're thinking the wrong way on that there i think these people were fully aware that this well was unusable they bought it this way knowing this well was not usable really? i don't want you to think they thought that they knew it was not they're coming in now asking to use this because it's on that property they knew when they bought it that it wasn't unless i'm mistaken um brad do you know anything on that can you just clarify i, I don't know that at all um we, you know, they just hired us to provide them a plan showing the existing well and existing septic systems. Um, I was kind of hoping they would be on the meeting here. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm kind of writing down some of these questions. I'd almost be willing to request a continuation and, and kind of put together a list of questions with you that we could ask them to clarify. Okay. Ed, I yeah, so in 2008, the Board of Health did send uh, the current owners a letter saying that they had to abandon the well. So they were using it in 2008. Now, they, as um, Chris said, they bought it from uh, Deutsche Bank in 2007. So they never had actual dealings with the previous owner. It, it, they bought it from the bank. Now, whether the bank told them or not, I don't know. Yeah, but that's your due diligence. To, you know, you, you buy something. You know, if you don't want to spend a few hundred bucks for a lawyer to, to you know, and, or the engineer to, to, you know, to check out all this stuff. I mean, it's, you know, be, buy and beware. If, you know, you, you don't, you know, well, it, it, the whole thing, I just don't like it. But I, I'm going to, I'm not going to say anything more. You guys can do what you want to do. Okay, Bob. Well. Um, yeah, so I'm assuming they bought it at a short sale, probably didn't have a Title V done at the time of buying and probably didn't have a well test done. They bought it as is. If, um, but again, it's questions I'm just assuming I don't know. Um, Brad, Brad is, I guess, looking to maybe continue it. Um, yeah, I, I think that. Um, again, I, I, I don't like it. I don't know if, if it's going to be a yes for me, even when we do continue it. Um, but 
I'll, I will agree to continue it if you want to look into it more, maybe try to get some answers from the owner. Um, Chris, are you still feeling that way? Or you want to just. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, le I'm leaning towards more information or I'm leaning towards Bob, you know, right now. Okay. Uh, what, do you, what do you think, Brad? You still want to continue to the next meeting and see if you can find something more than everybody knew and they're just looking to tie into it now? Yeah, I think that would probably be best for my client is to at least give them a chance to answer some of these questions. Um, maybe they'll understand where you're coming from and, and um, you know, we can, we can see what they have to say. Okay, I'm fine with that. Is there anyone on Facebook or any comments on this one that would like to? No comments on Facebook. Okay. Like to Brad, I'd like to also know too, if they're gonna live there or if they're just gonna rent it because if they have an address somewhere else, I mean, that, that I think should be considered too. If this is just so they can make money, then I'm even more against it. So, but yeah, no, that's so I'd like to know if they want to live there themselves over the winter or if they're going to rent it. Yeah, that's the first question I wrote down, Bob. Okay, thank you. Okay. Someone like to make a motion to continue to, I believe it's September 16th, uh, no, December 16th. Is that the next meeting? Am I correct? Is it sixteenth? You said, correct. Yes. Okay. Make a motion. We continue four, 16 Fourth Ave um, to our next meeting on December sixteenth. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Bob Pellucci. Aye. Chris Pratt. Aye. Derek Maxim. Aye. Thank you for that, Brad. We'll see you in a couple hey, weeks. Could I just ask real quick? The the questions I've written down is. You know, is a house rented or is it vacant? Uh, are they planning on using it year round? Are they using association water right now or the well? Um, it is, once again, is the house year round? Have they paid to tie into the association water already? Have they had any water tests done on it? Uh, did they know that the well was illegal? I believe we are kind of already answered that one since you sent a letter in 08, correct? Yeah, I, I guess my only other one, did they know it illegal before they bought it at the short sale? I mean, okay. obviously they knew in 2008 when we sent it. I'm assuming they probably didn't because it was a short sale, but to just, uh, that, I think that was all my questions. Everybody else agree? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Brad. Hey, thanks, Brad. Have Thank a good you. night. You See you in too. two weeks. Thanks, Brad. Next Thanks. on the agenda, 14 Violet Street. Meet with Grady Consulting LLC to discuss local upgrade requests. Um, I believe Kevin Grady is on the line with I us. I am here. Can, you, can, you can hear me? Yes. Can hear uh, good, you. Evening. good evening, everyone. Um, Kevin Grady from Grady Consulting, representing the applicant for the septic system application for uh, 14 Violet Street. Um, as you guys know, this area is uh, predominantly undersized lots. Um, it's difficult to fit a conventional system on the properties. Uh, so the existing system failed the Title V inspection and they would like to upgrade the system. Um, due to the size of the lot, they uh, need a few local upgrade requests. I'll just go over the system a little bit first, then we'll talk about the upgrades. Um, the system's for a three bedroom house. We obtained a perk rate of 27 minutes an inch and has a loading factor of 0.33. We basically need a thousand square foot um, ADS chamber system to accommodate the three bedrooms at that perk rate. Uh, based on the size of the system and the undersize of the lot, we need a couple of local upgrades um, in order to fit it into the property. We located this system in the front of the house on the Violet Street side, because that's where the most area was. Uh, in the back, as you can see, it's a little tighter. Would also have construction access issues. The existing systems in the back, I typically like to go in that same direction so we don't have to reconfigure the plumbing. Um, 
but here it, it seemed much more straightforward to utilize the larger space. So the applicant's requesting the following local upgrade requests. I apologize. It looks like we've had some, we had some typos on the requests, um, but we're here to request them now anyway. <coughs> um, we'd like to request a local upgrade for the leaching system set back to the property line. Um, if you go to the plan view, I can describe it and then we can look at my typos. Um, so we need a reduction to the setback to the front lot line, the street from 10 feet to eight feet. Um, and we also are requesting a reduction in the septic tank location setback to the cellar wall from 10 feet to four feet. So that's yep, right in, right on the front right corner there. And then we'd like to request a, a, a reduction in the system location setbacks to the water supply line from 10 feet to five feet. We're showing it at 6.4 there, but five feet gives us a little more flexibility. Um, of course, it's a new water service, but they didn't know they were gonna need a new leaching field when they put it in. So we'll have to remove some trees and relocate the water line to accommodate the maximum feasible compliance system. So I'll be happy to take any questions if you have them. Okay, thank you. Um, so this was previously a three bedroom, am I correct with that? Yeah, it's still a three bedroom. It's three, so that's what was there before? Yes, okay. I went through the house, it's clearly three bedrooms. Okay. The assessors does have it at two, but. Did you go through it? I did not. Do we have anything in the file that was approved for this one, Ed? Well, I guess three bedrooms is the minimum size um, to design it for. I, I guess you could deed restrict it to, to two, but the sizing is correct. Okay. Is that under Title V, the minimum size is a three bedroom sizing. Okay. Ed, can you just uh, maybe just clarify that one point? Um, um, no, there's nothing in the file on the previous system. So I, I don't know whether the previous system was for three bedrooms or two bedrooms. Okay, but the assessors does have it for two? The assessors has it for two. So that's the only information we really have. Okay, now with this one, uh, is this outside of zone A and B? Um, I know- it's, it's in the zone B, it's, it's well outside the zone A. But it is in zone B? Correct. Okay. All of Clock Shores is in zone B. So that's where um, we, we pretty much don't, uh, I don't want to say a lot, but um, we've been sticking to what has been there. Am I correct on that? If, it's, if it was a two bedroom? Yeah. Okay. Um, but Kevin, you said this is clearly a three bedroom inside now. Yeah, I went in and walked through, and there's definitely, I mean, one one of the rooms. I guess you could consider the a living room on the back, that back addition. But they have the kitchen and living room, and that if you're facing from the street, the front left corner, and then there's two bedrooms um, on the deck side, so that entire back um, where it says on footings, that addition that appears to be intended for privacy. Now, there was no, I think they're selling, there wasn't any furniture in there. Um, so when I walked through, I was thinking it was a bedroom. I, I actually wasn't thinking at the time that we were in his own B and that might be an issue. So my, my intuition was that it was a bedroom. Okay. Um, I know just from previous cases um, with nothing in the folder, we, we don't always go by the assessors. Um, we have done a walkthrough. We've sent Ed to, to verify. And if there is three bedrooms, um, we'd be more apt to call it a three bedroom because that's what they are, unless you can just see something brand new just built on it. Obviously, um, that, that would be a red flag. I mean, right. It's just, I don't think this addition is brand new. Um, yeah, the addition has been there a while. 
Okay. Yeah, Ed, tomorrow, can you check the um, building department folder and see if they have anything in there? Because, I mean, pretty much everything down there started off as two bedrooms. Um, has been my experience over the last years anyway. So, um, you know, a lot of people use rooms. I've seen people in closed porches. I mean, a lot of people, you know, over the years wanted more sleeping room for the weekends when people go down there. But just... Um, you know, just to go to a, a another bedroom without any um, backup, you know, in that zone. Um, you know, I, see, I, you know crawl space is turning into additions. Yeah. Um, okay, that that was my main question, and then I guess the next one on the relocation of the water line. Um, when it's within ten feet, I believe it, it needs to be sleeved or encased in concrete. Am I correct on that? Was that proposed on this plan? They don't need to be sleeved. They need to be uh, pressure tested um, to prove that they're um, class one hundred and fifty. Yeah, uh, we can we can propose a sleeve though on it. No, if, if you want to make that a uh, condition, I have no issue with that. Okay, it's, pretty easy it's to usually a lot easier than than putting it in concrete or, or yeah. chemical test. I agree. No problem. We can add a sleeve to that. Okay. Um, that was my only two. So I, I guess I'll turn it over to you, Bob, um, for discussion or comments. Um, but no, it was the same thing. I, I didn't see a sleeve on there. I was going to ask that. And, um, you know, I just, I'd like some confirmation that there's really three bedrooms there if, if we're going to approve three bedrooms or else. Um, you know, I have no problem just approving it with a two-bedroom deed restriction now. So, if we could uh, obtain the um, local upgrades, um, so we don't necessarily have to do another meeting, maybe Bob and I can work out the two bedrooms versus three bedrooms issue, so, um, and that way they can get to installing it. I know we have to have a public hearing for your approval on the reductions, but I'm not sure that Bob and I couldn't come to a, I mean, sorry, Ed and I couldn't come to a, uh, a resolution on how many bedrooms are there. And if we can't, we can come back. Okay, Chris, uh, comments, questions to, to Kevin? What, what are you thinking? Um, sure. I was thinking the waterline sleeve was one thing. And then, um, it, the existing system, do we know it, that's just a tank? Like how new is it or how old is it? I should say. I'm not sure. Um, that's all the info I had is that there was a tank. I'm thinking right, there's a pit. In the file. Yeah. I'm thinking there's a pit off of there, but it, it was below surface and. Right. Um, and then the quick four, the reduction in the size. Do we normally ask for a, a waiver on that or no? I, am I mistaken? Um, I can't remember. Is so there the a reduction record? in size for the quick four? Yeah, that's yeah. kind of a standard um, um, granted. It, yeah, that's in their general use approval. That okay, I, maybe it's just a way that like, I know other engineers are presented it a little differently and I couldn't remember if it was required or not to ask for that. Um, that's why I was just looking for clarification. Um, yeah, but other than that, I'm, I'm, you know, look at the same issue with the bedroom as um, that's been voiced already. So that's all I got. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ed, any comments or anything on this one? Questions? Um, but the only issue I have was the um, the tank and the chambers are right next to each other. Um, and just if you could slide the, whether the board would be okay. I mean, he's showing eight feet off the street. Uh, I'd rather see six feet off the street and uh, at least two feet between the tank and the chambers. Um, but it's, it's I, up to the board for that one. I have no issue with that on, on our end. Okay, thank you, Ed. All right, so I guess the question is maybe, uh, Bob, you might know on this one, is there any way to approve it not doing the walkthrough? Uh, it's, it needs to be continued. What do you, 
I mean, I'll approve it as a two bedroom now. And if they come back with evidence that it was a three bedroom, we can always just put it on another meeting and, and vote to take that restriction off. But, um, but if they want to start now, I think we, we can't approve half of it. I don't think anyway. How do you guys typically do your, if this was a conforming system, does the board approve it? Or does it just go through the uh, department with, uh, before the agent? It, because re really before the board, I believe, for the local upgrades at this point. Yeah, I think what you're saying is that all, all the waivers you're asking for, um, I think the board is okay with the with, uh, offset to the property line, the reduction from the tank to the building, um, and, the, and the, we, now we're sleeving the water line. So I think that those issues the board can approve now, but then whether to put a two bedroom deed restriction or uh, make it a three bedroom, that's not a waiver you're asking for. Correct. So I think w if we can get the local upgrades and I guess if it's a two bedroom, we can go ahead and install. If it's a three bedroom, then would need to uh, come back. Are they gonna, they're going to go on your walkthrough for either scenario, I believe. Um, and this I'm going to, I'll, co I'll coordinate that walkthrough ASAP too, by the way. I'm just well, trying we'll to use, Well, we'll check the building department to see if anything was ever legally added or changed to a bedroom and and then the walkthrough too. And if it was, you know, if it was really a, always meant to be a bedroom or if, a, I mean, I bet almost every house down there was a two bedroom. So yeah, I, I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all. So, I mean, but we wouldn't approve a plan without putting a deed restriction on. So like I said, in my opinion, if you wanted to prove tonight, it's with a two bedroom deed restriction, or we can put it back at the next meeting and then, and we can discuss that part of it. I think I agree with you, Bob. I don't see how we could approve. We can't approve this plan without determining the bedrooms. So I agree. I think the only way is to add that two bedroom deed restriction. Um, if you did want this approved tonight, if you did not want to, it's, it's only two weeks away. It's the 16th. Um, um, let's see. If I get it approved. Of course, my client isn't here. Who should be making that decision? Time, time isn't. Uh, it's not my time. Um, so, if if we approve for two bedrooms, well, let's just continue it then. I guess I was thinking if we approve for two bedrooms, I could come back and say it's a, a three bedroom in those two weeks, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I mean, if you and Ed find evidence that it really was a three bedroom, then, you know, I wouldn't have any problem removing that restriction. But right. tonight, without knowing that, I, I wouldn't be comfortable doing that. Okay, let's, let's approve it with the two, for the two bedrooms. And I'll, uh, if, if we find evidence to the contrary, we'll come back in two weeks. Because we won't need to notify a butters or anything. No. Does that work? Are you going to reduce the size of the system, too, if it ends up going down to the two? That's a good question. I guess uh, technically I'm not supposed to because even with a two bedroom, well. Well, you can, no, you can design it for two bedrooms if you have the two bedroom deed restriction. Yeah, correct. Yeah, so that'd save you some money. All right, so let's do this. Let's continue it. That way I can just redesign it if, if it's gonna be two bedrooms. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll Any make a motion confusion. that we continue it to our next meeting on the 16th, did you say? Yes. Correct. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, Bob Pellucci? Aye. Chris Spratt? Aye. Derek Maxim? Aye. All right, thanks, thanks. guys. I'll uh, work on these items and Ed, I'll get in touch with you for a walkthrough. Okay. All right, thanks guys, have a good night. Thanks, you too. All right, we'll do.
Okay, next on the agenda, um, we'll have a brief discussion on the 43D committee update. I'll turn it over to Chris Spratt for that. Um, all yours, Chris. All right, so not so much of an update, more discussion since um, we'll all be meeting for the first public hearing tomorrow night. Um, so last meeting, our last meeting, Bob had asked for me to get some information from um, Scott Turner, who is the review engineer for environmental partners, who um, the town has hired to do review for the entire project, um, just to see what he would be handling as far as our scope. Um, what would he be handling for like what we need to be looking at as far as the hospital property goes, and then to see what he could provide us for future services down the road. And I forwarded his email to you guys. I just figured I'd bring it up now to see if you guys had a chance to look at it and had any comments on that. or want any more information from him. Okay. A um, couple of questions on that. I know a meeting tomorrow night, Ed and I were discussing earlier uh, this afternoon, how we were going to go about the meeting tomorrow night. Um, I already have, I haven't totally reviewed the septic plan, but I have a couple of questions and issues with uh, a tunnel tank. I'm not, in, I'm not a fan of them. I, I do not like them. Um, but Ed thought maybe we should wait to bring up uh, points to the review engineer and see if he had already brought up that point and have them all in one to, to submit to to their engineer. Um, did, do you agree? I mean, what what's our purpose tomorrow night? It's just just to hear them out. I mean, we're not discussing our comments because we haven't seen the review letter from the review engineer what he said. So um, it was um, in our meeting last week to finalize um, the application to open the so then the 180 days would start kick in after that. Um, he did have some comments in there and I don't remember if there was any specific stuff. He still hadn't, he didn't thoroughly deep dive reviewed yet. Um, but also the septic part isn't on in the schedule for meetings is I think that fifth meeting, I mean, which could change too, depending on other hearings, if they have to be continued or not. Um, I'm looking for that email now, but um yeah, the specific septic stuff isn't going to be for, I would say, I don't know, two months, month and a half. Okay, so what's so tomorrow I'll... for? Are we going to be talking about sound and that kind of stuff? Or? It's to open the hearing. Um, it's an overview of the entire project. And all the boards that are have the main stake in the project are required, well, should all be there. So it's, and then the pub, it's also the public's first chance to chime in also, um, which I think is beneficial for us to be there is to hear if there's any concerns as far as, I don't think anyone's going to really talk about the septic system. I mean, I know we're obviously going to look at that, but I'm sure the noise is going to be stuff they're going to bring up. And then we can take that forward to our hearings down the road when it comes to the noise. Okay. Okay. I think that answers my question, Chris. So we don't really need to deep dive into the septic for tomorrow night. There's nothing we're going to yeah. need to bring up at tomorrow night's meeting. Yeah, well, um, Derek made a good point earlier about um, they're not showing any existing system there. Um, so I agree we shouldn't um, go into the details of the new septic system. But um, do you think we could ask, you know, to at least show some of where the existing system is and how they're going to deal with it? Not on the property. That was on sewer, right? That used to be tied into Middleborough sewer back in the day. It's out on um, Main Street. There's also a field. But are they going to deal with that, though? They have I a field that. across the street, too. In that farm down Bridge Street is one of their old systems. Do, yeah. do they have any tanks on site? And the sewer line? Not that I know of. I mean, the sewer line, maybe, but I didn't. 
Yeah, sewer yeah. lines are run to most of the big buildings in there. Yeah, so just have them show those then. Yeah, that was my question, uh, Chris. Um, I know there's a big pump station out front on the front lawn. Um, it looks like that's where one of them drainage ditches, basins are kind of going. They got proposed out front. So obviously that's going to have to get addressed. Um, and then I, I know there are quite a few buildings on site. Um, my concern is that all those buildings were tied into that one pump station, that there isn't any left abandoned septic tanks or pits somewhere on this property because they're not showing it. And then the other um, concern I have is what um, pipe material is that sewer line made out of going to that pump station seeing you know, it was gravity to the pump station back then they were using asbestos concrete pipe um, which if that is the case that is out there they need a DEP permit to get that pipe removed um, and disposed of because they're going to be digging through it where the buildings are, where that basin out front is. Um, it may not be that pipe, I just don't know. So it was a question I was bringing up. I just don't know if that's tomorrow night's meeting we do this, or we just send this to the review engineer comments that he would deal with their engineer. That's all, I'm, I didn't know which way to go tomorrow night. So I'm just, wondering if that's falling under the DEP cleanup portion, which last week's meeting I did ask, um, not on the meeting, but I did. Um, I did ask Nate if um, if they had filed on all the DEP side of it for the cleanup of the site, and we had been not the town had not been notified yet that they had filed with DEP for that the cleanup portion, and especially where you you mentioned that the asbestos in the pipe. I wonder if that would maybe that's why it's not on there because they ex expect to clean it up. I know it still should be on there for an existing conditions, but um, I wonder. I'm just, I'm wondering out loud if that's why they didn't include it because it was in that, that filing, which we haven't seen yet. Because it doesn't involve us, it involves the state. Okay, so the whole cleanup that even that pipe, right, the permit is through DEP to remove asbestos concrete pipe. Yeah, I'm curious if it's in that filing and that's why they didn't, they left it out, even though they probably should have shown it as existing conditions. They, maybe they couldn't find, couldn't find it. I don't know. Um, before the meeting tonight, I quickly tried to go on DEP site to see if there was a, a file number and any information yet, and uh, I didn't get very far. Okay. Um, that was all my questions. I think you answered them for uh, tomorrow night. I think it's just going to be more of an observation meeting for the board, and I guess we'll have comments from then. Um, we'll get a temperature of the room, too. <laughs> yeah. down the road. See where. Okay. Any other discussion, uh, Bob, Pellucci on this one? No, I'm all good with it. We'll see what tomorrow brings. Okay, any other comments on that, Ed? No, I'm good. Okay, um, quick uh, thing on pending items. I, I don't have any pending items to discuss with the board. Uh, Bob, you have anything you want to discuss? No, nope, I'm all set. Chris Pratt, anything? No, I'm good. Okay, um, I'll see, Ed, if you have anything to discuss. If not, we can jump to... Uh, the announcements of the COVID-19 update, if you'd like to do that. Uh, sure. Um, so there's still getting a lot of cases in Lakeville. Um, we have uh, had over 40 in the last two weeks. So um, it's not just Lakeville, it's everywhere. Um, cases going up and even in Massachusetts, I think we had over 4,000 um, today, just today in Massachusetts. So like I said, it's, it's, it's everywhere. It's not just Lakeville, but you know, we, we can do our part here in Lakeville to, to keep those numbers down. Um, like I said, we don't, if, if this keeps going the way it is, they're going to start closing more things down and that's, it's not what anyone wants. So just, just try to make an effort, you know, um, wherever you are about wearing a mask, social distancing, um, and just, and just, I, I know a lot of people were, uh, had Thanksgivings and stuff like that. So, they recommend if you were at a Thanksgiving with outside your immediate family to think about getting tested. Um, you know, like I said, it was, it was a week ago, but I mean, those people should be taking precautions because we are expecting another big spike within the next week or so because of all the Thanksgivings. And like I said, with more holidays coming up, more Christmas parties, uh, Christmas parties are going to be starting in a week or so. So just really just think twice about um, going to some of these, you know, we, we, we want to 
we want to have an enjoyable Christmas. And part of that is to have everything open. Um, so it's, it's sometimes better not to go to all the parties and, and just enjoy it with your family. Um, that's all. All right. Thank you for that, Ed. Um, any comments on COVID, Bob? Well, no, I mean, like he said, I think we just need to really just suck it up for a few more months until the vaccine comes out. Um, we hit 10,000 people in the hospital uh, um, right now with the COVID. Or was it 100,000? The numbers are so big now, I can't remember. I think we got to 100,000 people hospitalized today. Um, somebody's dying almost every 30 seconds now of it. Um, you know, and it, it's just going to get worse. I mean, it, the next couple of months are just going to get worse. So, um, yeah, I think they said today, I got cut out, so I didn't hear all the heads, but they said today, if you went to Thanksgiving without outside your immediate family, that you uh, just assume somebody there had it because the positive test numbers are so high right now. Uh, the assumption is somebody probably had it. So, um, I mean, it's terrible. It was a horrible Thanksgiving. It's terrible not seeing your families. I mean, thank God last year it didn't start till after them, but, you know, it sounds like by, you know, April, May, they should have enough shots for everybody. And, you know, I'll say a prayer that they do and that we can get, get back to life. So that's all I got. Thank you, Bob. Any comments, uh, Chris? Yeah. I mean, we, like it's already been said, you just need to you know, hang in there a little bit longer. Um, you know, talks today that there may be some more stimulus and hopefully in that stimulus money, there's more money for testing. And um, if we get more testing out there, that'll help, get us through to the vaccine and into more people, you know, closer to, you know, getting away from all of this. Um, I mean, I know one thing the testing does would, would help us not have to close stuff down. If we get the outbreaks snuffed out before they get too big. But um, unfortunately, we're, we are where we are right, right now. We're, um, where we have no choice to kind of do what we're doing until the outbreaks start to wean, wean off. But other than that, that's all I had. Okay, thank you. All right, next on the agenda, review and approve meeting minutes as typed. Uh, they were continued from November 18th, 2020 meeting. Um, the approved Board of Health executive session meetings as typed. Did it be approved in executive session only? Um, so I will make a motion to enter executive session now and not return to the open meeting. Um, and in, again, the executive session is just to approve the meeting minutes as typed from October 28th, 2020. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor, Bob Pellucci? Aye. Chris Pratt? Aye. Derek Maxim? Aye. Okay, thank you for that. I think we might just have to wait a little.